Ladies and gentlemen, got the spinners in our background. And the spinners, they're talking about how honest they are when they do what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. Those of you who have mortgages, those of you who have finding yourselves stuck, not knowing what to do because they're sending you notices that they're about to foreclose on you. The next couple of series of videos is going to be focused on helping you. So I would suggest you pay attention. This video will not be long. We're going to point out one point and we're going to stick to that point. Some courts are saying that a deed of trust is not a trust agreement. Now you've heard me tell you that that's a lie. Now, technically, they're right because they're using a technicality. So we want to take away their technicality because somebody sent me something yesterday and it was primarily, I believe, as a result of my talking about presumption of law and that the courts rely on presumption of law. I'm sorry that this wasn't already pulled up. We'll talk about it in a minute. And he talked about this phrase that the courts have created. It's an acronym. Okay? So, presumptive assumption, blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't give up about the court and their presumptions. A presumption is not based on any reality. So, that's why you have to put forth facts. So, I'm giving you what you need to rebut the court's presumptions <laughs> use their own junk against them ladies and gentlemen use their own junk use their own language against them see they'll show you one or two case laws so we are giving you a memorandum of laws that are over 25 30 40 memorandums well all of the courts are consistently saying the same thing now what do you mean by consistently some courts are not saying the same thing ah but just because you have one or two wayward courts not saying what is the uniformed understanding of the courts, then you pull up a Supreme Court decision on that very same issue. Okay? Just that simple. That's how you rebut the court's presumption because as we showed you, now this is the truth. The courts, not just federal district court, because that's the conversation I had with some people yesterday. This court is bound by the decisions of the Supreme Court of the United States. See, it didn't say the United States Supreme Court. It said the Supreme Court of the United States. But it is bound by the decisions of the United States Supreme Court. So it gives you two different courts, two different jurisdictions, administrative and federal. And by the way, this one is dealing strictly with arbitration. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you who had your arbitrations award vacated by the court because they came up with some, well, this is this and this is that, and there wasn't this and there wasn't. You guys need to understand, as long as you followed the rules, you have to appeal. Don't come to me saying, hey, they denied me. That's not going to work. You have to do your part, then I can tell you what to do next. But if you're not going to follow the instructions at the beginning, how are you ever going to follow them at the end? Huh? That's what I thought. Okay. Let's get back to the conversation at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, thus recognizing the theory as a presumption or inference has legal meaning. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have a lawful meaning. See, presumptions are not law. They're not lawful. There's nothing about a theory being law. Go ahead. Go and find a single theory that's law. The Constitution doesn't recognize that. So you have the right to a fair trial. Allowing somebody to come up with a theory, that's what lawyers do. Allowing someone to come up with a theory is not enough. Uh, the person, the path, the presumption, assumption, let's, let's click on it and see. Tacit acquiescence and hearsay. That's what that's supposedly stand for. Somebody's on a path to ignorance. Not the individual who sent it to me, but the individuals who rely on stupidity like this. Presumptions give way to reality. No, they don't. Reality gives way to reality. 
You cannot have a falsity and a fact come together and disagree with each other. A presumption by its very nature is not fact. It's an assumption. A fact is not an assumption, ladies and gentlemen. A fact does not change. If it was a fact yesterday, it's a fact today. A presumption changes based upon an opinion of some stupid court. So let's do that again. The Constitution does not allow the courts to create presumptions. The Constitution says that everyone has the right to due process of law, not the laws created by Congress. Please, due process of law was due process of the common law. Now, what the courts have said is the common law is the rulings of the court. Sorry, wasn't that way in England? Wasn't that way in Rome? Wasn't that way in Greece? Go ahead. Courts don't make law, especially in the United States. The courts did not make the law in England except for the fact when the king stepped in and said, hey, uh -uh, I ain't going for that. Then it became law because it was called the king's court. Go back. Take a look. It was the king's court. <laughs> that wasn't common law. So anyway, as I mentioned, presumption gives way to reality when fact opposing the presumption are present. Exactly. See, according to presumption, it is upon you, pay attention, to rebut the presumption. Now notice this, the term presumption, the term, it's a term. The term presumption, it is a legal term, signifies that which may be assumed without proof. Excuse me? You mean a presumption is something that is assumed? And there's no proof? You know what? There have been people who have assumed that men have evolved from apes. Oh, no, no, no. They're theories, but not a single ounce of proof. Uh, for those of you ignorant idiots who think that there is proof, then why is there a such thing as the missing link? Why aren't dogs producing humanoid babies? Why aren't cats producing rabbits why aren't rabbits producing giraffes wait a minute hold on let's not stop there why isn't a hamster producing a whale why aren't whales producing elephants how come every species pay attention we're not talking about breed we're talking about species of life on this planet produces species of like kind so don't give me nothing about no ever evolution uh that's that's a presumption it's always been a presumption okay so the term presumption signifies that which is assumed without proof or taken for granted Who, who's granted I, I don't why would anybody want to take something for him and is defined as something asserted as self-evident Results of human reason and experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, due process has nothing to do with human reason and experience. Human reason doesn't amount to reality. There are some people who talk about, well, it's the cosmos. We're in this, and we follow the stars, and we believe in this and that. I don't give up about no human reasoning. Human reasoning doesn't amount to reality. Do you guys not get this? That's their way out. It's presumption. Okay? In relation to presumptions, J. Uh, C. J. Taylor thus observes, Who the f*** was C. J. Taylor? What makes him anybody? The facts from which presumptions is deduced ought to be consistent with the proposition. What proposition? H? Propo prep oh, preposition, anyway. Which they are intended to establish. Wait, a presumption is trying to establish something? Well, sir, you can't establish a fact, ladies and gentlemen. A fact is already rested on itself. A fact needs no establishment. A fact doesn't need somebody to go and apply for a license and then get the equipment together and uh, hire the staff and then get the accounting together and put a open sign. 
it doesn't need that type of establishment, y'all. And further, the same presumptive evidence, presumptive evidence, there is no such thing as presumptive evidence. A presumption is never evidence. Ought not rest on conjecture or and surmise. It must be built on a solid foundation. Well, how can you build a foundation on something that is an assumption? Wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, it said solid foundation. The term presumption signifies that which may be assumed without proof, meaning it has no foundation. It is a theory, not based on a hypothesis, not based on a fact. Presumptions give way to reality. Presumptions give way to reality. In other words, get out of the way. Reality says that to presumption all the time. See, when facts opposing the presumption are present, as term, presumption signifies that which may be assumed without proof or taken for granted and is defined as something asserted as self-evident result of human reasoning and experience. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't give up about that stupidity. But however, you must know this in advance. That's why you must do one thing. Oh, by the way, in 1898, <laughs> this idiot, his name was James Bradley Tyler. Wait, is that, is that trailer? Trailer? Anyway, this idiot, a preliminary thesis on the evidence at common law. On the evidence at common law. Excuse me. Gotta be kidding me. Said another way, a defendant is not presumed innocent. Said another way, a defendant is not presumed innocent. Why? Because he must prove he's innocent. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't make this up. You can pull this case up yourself. I just, I, I'm finding it just like you. Okay? Larson versus North. North, 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 North. Oh, my naughty, naughty. Okay. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can go back to the premise of this particular video. The premise of this particular video is for you guys to understand this. The courts have said that a deed of trust is not a trust. In holding that a valid trust was created, we are in essence, this is what the courts held, this particular court, in this particular jurisdiction, and this is a California court, by the way, in holding that a valid trust was created. Who created the trust? You did. You are the grantor of the trust. We are, in essence, determining that the declaration... Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. You guys don't have a declaration of trust. You've heard me say, create your own declaration. Well, how do I do that? Go and download a sample temp sample template of a declaration of trust we have our whole trust section on our website information is there the whole information on how trusts are created is there do your research people you got time become a trust expert do your research we put the information on the site for a reason hold on there's the pdf section tick tock tick tock tick tock while that's pulling up because it's going to be a second we're going to continue talking about trust, okay? Determining that the declaration of trust in conjunction with the deed of trust as a conveyancing instrument. Hmm. So the deed of trust is a conveyancing instrument. It conveys interest in a property to another. That's all it does. Satisfies the essentials of a valid express trust. Well, we don't care about it being a valid express trust. We care only about it being a valid trust. So don't get hooked on the word express trust. You focus on it's a valid trust. Go ahead and look at the Deed of Trust Act and look at what a common law trust is. In making this determination, our consideration has been limited to the matters herein discussed, having to do with the creation of a valid trust. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all we're talking about is is the deed of trust a valid trust okay now they are limiting their discussion only to this issue in this case this is the same in every state we observe what are you observing sorry went too far 
I keep doing that, y'all. Come on now. Get back to where we need to be. We observe in this regard that the trial court specifically excluded from its findings and determination the construction, validity, and effect of trust spendthrift provisions and destructibility of the trust and respective rights of trustees, beneficiaries, and judgment creditors. The same limitations apply to our uh, determination. So notice what they're saying, because many of you won't get it right away, so that's what people like me are here for. With regards to the trial court, it excluded from its findings a determination on the construction, validity, and effect of the trust, respecting whether or not it has a speed thrift provision or it is destructible based upon its provisions or can be irre I mean, revocable and respect regards to rights of the trustees, the beneficiaries, and judgment creditors. See, the same limits apply here in our determination. We're not determining all these facts. That's what the court's saying. We're only determining if a valid trust was created. So they are documenting by this case that a valid trust was created. Appellant's petition for hearing by the Supreme Court was denied on... November 18, 1970. The reason why the Supreme Court of the State of California, which makes this judgment confirm, okay? The reason why this judgment is so important is because this was the rule of the day that a trust was created. Now, this is not the only case. We just focused on this case. Why did we focus on this case? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we focused on this case because, as we mentioned before, if it is a duck, and it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, looks like a duck. <laughs> it's a duck. That's your foundation. That's why the courts are speaking up to all of the elements of a trust. Satisfies the, the essentials of a valid trust. Don't worry about the word express. Okay? We are only concerned by the essentials of a trust. For all, or further, all of his actions since executing the deeds is consistent with the fact that a trust was intended. It is the intentions of the grantor which creates the trust. Not the fact that it says it's a deed of trust. Not the fact that Congress has created some law. You are the grantor! I apologize. Because you don't even recognize your position when you're going in court. You are the grantor. We've already talked about how the grantor's intentions is law of the trust. We've shown you guys that information. So start taking your position as grantor. We've already told you, you can't sign over collateral for what you do not own. So, again, so that you understand, a trust was created. What we're going to suggest you do, this is the PDF section on our website. When you go to the website and you go to the PDF section, you don't have to use the search bar. Okay? You don't have to use the search bar. And as a matter of fact, the search bar is not even appearing here on my screen because my system is so slow. Okay? So we're not going to worry about the search bar. We're going to have you scroll all the way down. And it's a document known as the trust document. It's going to be under T's. And it's just going to be... T-R-U-S-T, got to go up a little bit, oh, I'm sorry, those of you who don't understand that this is in alphabetical order, I don't know what to tell you, I'm looking for the one that says trust document, where is the trust document, now trust document is going to be its own folder, okay, so because it's its own folder, it's its own folder. It's going to be ahead of all these other little T's. Okay? This is trust documents. We're going to wait for it to go on trust documents. After I show this to you, then I'm going to be gone. All right. These are all the trust documents for you to learn everything you need to know about trust, including common law trust. Um, let's do, let's see if we have, I even put the duty to respond in here. Okay, express trust, forming a trust, and 
all that information is here how to create so on and so forth ladies and gentlemen if you gotta do a declaration of trust here's what you do you simply go to Google and you type in declaration of trust template dot PDF just that simple declaration of trust template dot PDF and you'll get what you're looking for okay we're showing you all the documents trust declaration right here we're showing you all the documents that are located on a site regarding trust trust me you don't need to go anyplace else everything you need to understand about trust is right here on this site more than 20 documents for you to peruse and go through understanding trust from the beginning to the end this one right here is where you need to know this is corpus juris secundum 90 trusts corpus download this document because this gives you all of the understandings of your intentions being the law concerning that contract now I uh -uh, can't just walk in there and say uh -uh, I'm the grantor and my intentions is the law no you walk in there and say hey sorry first there was a trust agreement second you know what y'all wrong there was no collateral that collateral could not be foreclosed upon under your foreclosure act the foreclosure act doesn't allow that sorry I'm minimizing some things because I got work to do I told you that was going to be the last of it thank you for allowing me to explain to you all that a trust is a trust and a deed of trust is a trust it has all the essential elements of a trust that's your focus that's your argument that's one motion we're going to be back with another video explaining other aspects, including your ability of taking your credit, your full faith in credit, that is assigned to the United States because they are borrowing from you, and using that as collateral and pledging that collateral for the payment of that debt and having them go to the United States to receive their monies. Remember, you can pledge collateral as long as you can prove you have an interest in that collateral. Ah, ain't that interesting. Going to be back later. Take care, everyone.